I really hope you watch this video before you order or buy an iPhone 12. It's time to talk iPhone 12. Now, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you find it useful, helpful, all those things, please comment down below with any comments or questions you have. If you don't like this video, instead of giving it a thumbs down, maybe comment below. I'm always happy to start a discussion and I'm always looking to kind of improve the videos and uh, the things I offer here on the channel. So there we go. If you're new, you can also consider giving the channel a subscribe. It always helps me out. It helps me bring you more tech content. Let's jump in. Now I've wanted an iPhone, a smaller iPhone for quite a while now, but now that it's here, am I actually going to get it? Now I'll answer that question at the end of the video. There's a lot to kind of discuss and get through. So we're going to go 12 things about iPhone 12 finishing with the thing that not enough people are putting weight on ahead of pre-orders. Let's jump in with number one. So let's talk about the epic specs that are across all models, which could hurt the pro model, possibly uh, sales of the pro model. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in, uh, in the pricing. All the phones, OLED screens at, at last. 5G on everything. Uh, wide and ultra wide cameras across the board. Dolby uh, Vision HDR video across everything. A14 chip uh, ceramic shield to protect your screen across all models. Uh, and the new MagSafe adapter. So you're not missing out if you buy an iPhone 12 as opposed to a 12 Pro. Okay, let's talk design. Now, a lot of people complain that the iPhone doesn't change design enough, but then if it changed design and shape every single year and was less refined, then people would complain about that. Now, this year's iPhone is a real back to the future iPhone because it looks a lot like the four and five. But to be honest, they were always the best iPhones because they were Steve Jobs controlled design. At the time of his death, the iPhone 4S was about to be launched, but they said he was working on the next iPhone, the iPhone 5. But now we have the 2020 version of the iPhone 5. And now the sharp edges actually make it sit in the hand better, make it less slippery. And unlike the 4 and 5, the metal bands seem to protect the front glass and the back of the phone much more than they did in the past, but you're going to put a case on it anyway. And number three, while we're talking about protecting the front and back of your phone, let's talk about the glass. Now, Apple avoided calling it glass. It's ceramic shield. So it's meant to be four times less likely to break. I see a lot of broken iPhones and they say it's four times less likely to break then what? What's the benchmark? iPhone 11? Then say that. It's going to be interesting to see how it works in like real life tests, but this screen's going to cost a packet to replace. I would guarantee you that. So you're going to put a case on it anyway. Let's talk colors. Now I never got an iPhone 11 because I don't think the average consumer needs to upgrade every year and I pay for my phones. But that's a topic for another video. I love the green of the iPhone 11, but the Pacific blue looks really nice. And I think the iPhone 12 color options are a really good selection. Those into gold are probably gonna, probably gonna really like the pro gold. It, it's a really gold gold. You're gonna love it. So size isn't everything, but it's certainly something. And I think they really got the sizes right. I've been saying for some time, maybe not in a video, that they should have three sizes. I would have loved an iPhone Pro Mini, but I understand that trying to fit that extra camera and LiDAR sense into that very small chassis was just not possible. You would have been sacrificing battery, which just wouldn't have been acceptable. And even the camera setup they've got in the Max, they couldn't fit that into the iPhone 12 Pro. So I think, I think they got the balance right and I think they got the sizing bang on. Number six is the MagSafe charger. Now this is interesting. Uh, Apple jumped the gun a little bit with air power. And they've kind of gone back to the drawing board and I think, I think they might have actually nailed it with this one. I imagine this magnetic alignment is also going to help with data transfer when they go portless 
but still provide a non-wireless way of connecting to the phone. Now accessories for the MagSafe look really interesting. Apple showed off their own little wallet that connects to the back of the phone and the cases also use the MagSafe system. But they also showed off other products by Belkin. And I think the exciting thing about this is that this layout of magnets in the back of the iPhone will remain the same for years to come. The same way that the Apple Watch has stayed the same in regards to bands and the charger. And I think what will happen is that you'll be able to buy an accessory now, but use it for a long time. And that's good for the environment as well. So 5G is here. Well, it's on the iPhone. It may not be available where you live as a network just yet, but Apple sells so many products that this will actually push phone providers to roll out their networks uh, sooner in more places. So that's a good thing. It also means that if you hold on to your phone for a little while, you can upgrade now and knowing that if you want to hold on to that phone for kind of three to five years and some, you know, a lot of people do that, then you'll still have access to the 5G network down the track. So that's good. It also means faster 4G with these new phones than you used to in the past as well. So bonuses all around, but it's a good thing. So number eight, before we talk about the cameras themselves, let's talk about night mode. Now, they could have restricted this to you know, the Pro line and then kind of rolled it out next year to all the phones, but they've just, boom, it's there. It's available to everybody, and that's a good move. And number nine is the cameras, and I think they're great. Uh, they've got the balance right, I think, between the 12 and the 12 Pro. I'm not a huge fan of the fact that the iPhone 12 Pro Max has a better camera system than the iPhone 12. I, I personally hate big phones and I'll never buy one. You can hold me to that. Well, I might get one if the channel gets big enough so I can give you a true perspective, but I wouldn't want to have it as my daily driver. It's pretty simple, no matter which iPhone 12 you get, I think you're gonna be very happy with the cameras it offers. Number 10 is the LiDAR scanner and it's exclusive to the Pro line of phones, but for the average user, what does this thing do? Well, it can map a 3D space and improve the portrait style photographs where you've got the blurry background. But it seems like Apple have underutilized it a little bit. There was a perfect opportunity here to allow blurry backgrounds in video. So me sitting here, you can see my guitars are out of focus. They're slightly blurry, creating separation from the background. But with an iPhone, you can't do that. Everything's just in focus all the time. So you don't get that nice separation. So it seems like Apple missed a little opportunity there to create a little bit more separation between the 12 and the 12 Pro. So number 11 is a controversial one and I'll just try to get through this quickly. No charger, no headphones. So you do get a cable, you get a USB-C to lightning cable. So if you've got a Mac and an iPhone, that'll be great. You no longer have to use an adapter to plug your iPhone into your Mac. You're not gonna be able to use that cable with the bricks you had before, because they're gonna be USB-A, but you've probably got cables still. And to be honest, if you've got a newer iPhone, you're not using it anyway, because you're using a wireless charging mat, I would assume. I certainly do. I have one on my desk, one on my bedside, and that's it. In my car, I have a USB-A to lightning cable, because the car has A ports and that cable just sits in there. So I would like Apple to kind of always go braided cables from now on to keep their cables from breaking, but I'm happy for them to get rid of the cheap accessories. There's plenty of people selling old ones on uh, unused ones, not old ones as in used, but brand new, out of the box, people selling them on Marketplace because they never used them. So there's lots of people who've got this stuff and never used it. I've got every charging brick I've had since my iPhone 3GS. They all still work. They're littered all over my house. I've got a drawer uh, with a bunch of them in there. I, there's, I've got more than I need. I don't need any more. I certainly don't need uh, a five watt one. Uh, if Apple were to include a fast charger, yeah, maybe I would use it, but I've got fast chargers already. So I'm happy with this move. It also reduces the size of the box, and if you add that up, it drastically cha changes the environmental impact of shipping these everywhere. I'll also get a MagSafe adapter, and eventually I'll have MagSafe adapters in my house where I want them, say in my room, 
uh, in my uh, in my bedroom in my in my office here, and that'll be it. That's what I'll need. I might have one, you know, in the lounge room or something like that. I might even have one in the car. But that'll be it. That's all I'll need. So I'm happy with it. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm not freaking out. iPhone prices normally gradually creep up, creep up. They've stayed the same. They've added a lot of stuff, features to the phone, and they've removed some really cheap accessories that I don't really need. And finally, the reason not to buy an iPhone 12. Now you will note I didn't say 12 mini or 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max. I just said iPhone 12. And that's because the 12 is a bad deal. Now we're gonna look at US prices because looking at these phones, they all have a very similar spec and US pricing is good because it's the kind of global benchmark and we can all relate to that and it's the, it's the prices that Apple promote. They say it like this, the iPhone 12 mini, $699. The iPhone 12, $799. The iPhone 12 Pro, $999. And the iPhone 12 Pro Max, $1099. But the 12 starts at 64 gig. And the 12 Pro at 128 gig. So it's not really comparing apples with apples, is it? So let's take another look. When we actually look at the 128 gig models, the Mini comes in at 749, the 12 comes in at 849, the Pro 12 at 999, and the Pro 12 Max at 1099. Now, if you can make do with a 64 gig iPhone, then you might possibly look at the 12. However, I think you want at least 128 gigs, and I prefer 256 because I don't like to be dependent on paying for iCloud or cloud storage, which can add up over time. So looking back at these prices, it's just $150 now between the 12 and the 12 Pro. So why would you get the 12? Colors, maybe. If colors is a really big thing for you, you might go down that path. It's not a big step up, and you get that extra camera and portrait mode for just $150, which in my mind doesn't seem like a bad deal. So my honest opinion is that the 12 should be the worst selling phone out of these four different models. If you want small, go mini. If you want big, go max. If you're in the middle, go 12 Pro. It's the sweet spot there in the middle. So there you go, that's my 12 things you needed to know before you go out and buy or order an iPhone 12, especially that number 12. Pick your model carefully. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. Comment down below, are you getting an iPhone? Are you upgrading? If so, which model, which color, what are you gonna get? And you may have been hanging around because you wanna know, am I gonna get the mini after all this time waiting for a smaller iPhone? Yes, I'm gonna jump in and uh, get the mini and I will report back. I look forward uh, to checking it out, that smaller form factor, checking it out and uh, bringing it to you here on the channel. I'm Simon, this has been Tech My Life Video and we'll see you in the next one, bye.